of Krishna. Uh, they are fully uh, convinced that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, there he is, Krishna, who appears in this world as a, as a boy, who is holding some rice mixed with yogurt in his hand. That Krishna is, is God. A boy with some rice and yogurt in his hand. But why? Why? Why would God take such a form? <coughs> bewildering. In Srimad Bhagavatam we find how Lord Brahma became bewildered when he saw that boy. He thought uh, Krishna is some extraordinary boy, he has mystic powers, but he certainly didn't think that Krishna was the Supreme Lord. And he noticed that the residents of Vrindavan were giving so much attention to this boy. And of course he did some wonderful things. He lifted a hill, which is you know, remarkable. I mean, most people cannot lift hills. But of course, you have to see these things in perspective. Now really, and you're laughing, but think about it. To lift a hill is, is nice, but Brahma is keeping planets in their place and populating them. I mean, compare, compare for a moment. Just compare for a moment the mystical feats performed by Brahma in compared to that boy who lifted a hill. Really. Obviously, Brahma was thinking, well, I should just, just show them the boy and these residents of Vrindavan, who is really the possessor of true mystic power. So Brahma did that. When Krishna was out in the forest with his friends, Supreme Personality of Godhead in the forest with his friends, when Krishna was playing, imitating sounds of animals, God imitating sounds of animals, um, I, I made a presentation in a university and uh, the chairman of the student organization was also there in a suit and even, even the traditional watch in the vest pocket and everything. And at the end of the, of the lecture he comes to me and says like, damned good presentation, Jack. Damned good presentation. Really interesting. But, you know, tell me, tell me. Do you really believe all that? <laughs> so, do you really believe that? That God is jumping around with some kids imitating frogs? <laughs> uh, isn't it a little sort of the type of faith you would develop in your childhood when you're kind of four years old? God, and now, dear children, Sit still and just Uncle Swami will tell you a nice story. And once upon a time, there was a God and he was jumping around with his friends in the forest, imitating frogs. I mean, as an adult, do you really believe that? So, um, it may look awkward, uh, but exactly that. Uh, Krishna acting like a boy. And that particular day when Lord Brahma was out in the forest of Vrindavan observing Krishna and the coward boys, he saw that Krishna was going all by himself into the forest to look for a lost calf. Then Lord Brahma thought, this is my opportunity. And what he did is he took away all the boys and calf and hid them in a cave. Now Lord Brahma is on another time scale than we are. A moment of his time is a bit longer than ours. So he was gone in a flash uh, and back. And, but when he came back, uh, he, he thought he would see Krishna totally shocked seeing that all the boys and calves were gone. But they were not gone. They were still there. And Lord Brahma was shocked. Where are they? And then, he thought, but I put him in a cave. And he went to the cave, and they were in the cave. And he came back, and then the boys were still there. And he was totally bewildered. Then all those boys transformed, and all those calves transformed into four armed forms of Lord Narayan. 
Now, Prabhu knew that. One, two, three, four means God. <laughs> that, that, so that was, he knew that he was dealing with the Supreme Lord at that point. And he understood that actually Krishna, uh, that Krishna was the Supreme Lord. Uh, so the pastimes of the Supreme Lord are kind of bewildering. And if we have to defend it in, to, in, in front of uh, theologians, uh, if we have to defend it in, in, in front of academics, that the Supreme Lord is jumping around like a frog with a few boys, uh, does that really sound convincing. Uh, isn't that a naive type of faith? Mm. Why? Um, so uh, the rest of this lecture will be about um, why Krishna is performing childhood pastimes. Why the Supreme Lord is acting in such a way. Um, it is not at all uh, Childish, but rather the Supreme Lord is acting in that way to, um, as a child, um, to create uh, dependence. Um, because a child, a child is dependent. Um, thus, when the Supreme Lord takes the form of a child, and the Supreme Lord becomes dependent, uh, dependent on his devotee, um, what is a more intimate relationship? Um, that goes a step that goes way beyond to the living being praying to the Supreme Father. Um, o oh Lord, O oh Father in heaven, please uh, supply me. Uh, because as long as we approach the Supreme Lord as the Supreme Father, we will approach the Supreme Lord as the order supplier. That he is the one who is providing for everything as our father. Oh, my father, please save us. Oh, my father, please give us. Um, that is the relationship. But if we become the father, uh, then Krishna will say, Oh, please give me. Uh, oh, I need. Uh, so Krishna acts, um, takes on the form of a child. And in this way, Krishna seems to require protection. Uh, although we see in the pastimes of Krishna that in that form as a child, he is surrounded by elders. First of all, his parents. Um, they want to protect him. Now, to make the situation more complicated, we can read how Krishna has uh, two sets of parents. And and uh, um, Vasudev and Devaki and Nandan Yasoda. So it is described how uh, Krishna, after he left Vrindavan, after he had gone to Mathura, after uh, Krishna had killed Kamsa, there was uh, cer certainly a complication. Uh, we may remember that the residents of Vindavan had also gone to Mathura. There was a, a wrestling match and Krishna and Balaram had defeated these wrestlers, Chanura and Mustika. And that at that time, uh, different people in the wrestling arena had perceived Krishna in a different way, according to their faith. That it was described that the uh, the ladies of Mathura, uh, when they saw Krishna, they saw him as Cupid. Uh, and they were becoming overwhelmed by amorous feelings. Uh, Kamsa saw him as death personified. And also the wrestlers saw him as death personified or as a thunderbolt. It is said, uh, the yogis, they saw him as Paramatma. Uh, 